Uh, my job is really about managing people and, and, and sales representatives. And so I spend the majority of my time working with the leaders um, that work under me and, and working with them on how to connect and help people find the very best layers of themselves. Leadership is everywhere. In our work, in our family, in our community. We see leaders by their actions. We know their legacy. This podcast is about leaders, people just like you, doing amazing things every day. I hope these stories inspire you, they motivate you, and they fuel your leadership legacy. My name is Vicki Guy. Welcome to Ignite. Hi, and welcome to Ignite. Today, we are talking to Sarah Francis Martin. Sarah Francis is a mom, a wife, and a regional sales director for a large national pharmaceutical company. She might not be famous just yet, but in all the roles that she lives in, she brings energy, enthusiasm, and wisdom in how to make it all balance. There is so much packed into this interview, you're not going to want to miss it. We talk about Girl Scouts, we talk about being a mom, we talk about using social media to live out loud, and we talk about how to fill someone else's shoes while not imposing our own unrealistic expectations on ourselves. After this break, we'll be right back to talk to Sarah Francis. My name is Dana Morrison. I'm the IT director at Grace Christian School in Raleigh, North Carolina. IT directors often hoard so much knowledge that it's hard for their team members to learn. IT Pro TV has given us the ability to level up our technicians to a point where they can decide this is important for me to learn. I would recommend IT Pro TV uh, to any IT team. It's just a great tool uh, for any IT professional. Welcome back to Ignite. And we are joined today with Sarah Francis. Sarah, welcome to Ignite. Hi there, thank you. Good yeah. to see you again. You too. Sarah Francis is a regional director for a pharmaceutical company. And she's here today to share with us some of her experiences share some stories um, about her journey through her career and her life today. So I really can't say enough uh, thank yous for you joining us and sharing some of the personal situations that you're going to be sharing with us today. So I wanted to start out our conversation. Uh, you know, you and I spoke for a few minutes uh, yeah. the other day, and one of the things that you said to me that I just think I really want to start with because the whole intention of this podcast is to really celebrate people who just do really cool things where they are. And one of the things that you said to me is that you think that people should lead where they're at. So I want I thought we could open up with that and you could share with us a little bit about what you mean by leading where you're at. Yes, thank you so much for the question, and hats off to you for starting this this podcast. You know, I think there's so many people out there doing so many cool things, and you're giving it a platform to be heard. So good for you, and thanks for for having me. You know, leading where you're at, something that I am extremely passionate about because you know I think people wait for their moment, or people lay in bed at night and think, man, I, you know, I wish I could do that, or whatever the case. The reality is circumstances present to us every single day and we either make the choice to act in the moment or we make the choice to go home that night lay in bed and think about what we could have done and so you know that's just something that I try to live out my management team that I work with tries to live out um, and, and I take a, a lot of pride in mm -hmm. and it sounds like it is a consistent choice you mentioned that word choice that's right. So, you know, probably a good example of that, and it might sound small, but it's big in my world. Um, I have a daughter. I have two kids. I have a daughter that's eight and a son that's four. And um, when I was growing up, I was in Girl Scouts. I went all the way through, and um, I was a Gold Award recipient, which had a lot to do with scholarships I earned and recognition from the president, which was really cool. And so, naturally, I would love for my daughter to have that same experience. But, you know, as a working mom who also coaches her in other sports and has a demanding job, I put a line in the sand and I thought, you know what, I'm not doing this. Somebody else needs to step up and do this. Somebody else can take on this task. And two years went by. And then one day Anna Rose came home from school and she said, mom, 
they came to school today and they're going to start a Girl Scout troop at my school. I'm going to get to be in Girl Scouts. You just have to come to the library tonight. That's it. And I said, that's great. Like I was so excited. Well, lo and behold, I show up in the library and it's a salesperson from the Girl Scouts that has all these mamas in the room. And she says to us, all these precious little girls have voiced their opinion that they want to be in Girl Scouts. We just need one of you to stand up and agree to let them fulfill their dream. And I was furious in the moment because I thought, I am not going to stand up. Somebody else in this room needs to stand up. And what felt like an hour, which was probably only 10 seconds that went by before I raised my hand and I said, I'll do it. I'll do it. I can only do it if we meet after five o'clock and I can only meet this many times a month. And all the mamas in the room agreed. And um, you know what? The truth is, Vicki, is that little troop has been the biggest blessing in my life. And I'm so thankful for those little girls. And I'm so thankful for deciding in the moment to say, yes, I'm going to do it. I will step up. I will find a way to make that happen. That's fantastic. And you're giving them the opportunity to have those experiences that you had when you were younger, too. So hats off to you for, for raising your hand, because I imagine you're pretty busy with your work. And that, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. I, I want to hear a little bit about how you balance that. But first, tell us a little bit about, about the work that you do. What does it entail to be a regional director in a pharmaceutical company? Yes, it's a great question. Um, it's funny because I know my title says regional director of sales, but I really believe I'm in the people business. You know, at the end of the day, uh, my job is really about managing people and, and, and sales representatives. And so I spend the majority of my time working with the leaders um, that work under me and, and working with them on how to connect and help people find the very best layers of themselves. You know, that's mm -hmm. really what it comes down. When people get into sales, you know, they want to do great. They want to be recognized. They want to make the money. And we have the opportunity to do all of that. Um, but I think sometimes it takes a leader that slows down and pulls the genius out of somebody. And so um, a large part of how I see my job is I spend my time trying to pull the genius out of the managers that work for me. Because mm. Lord knows, if I had them all doing what Sarah Francis would do, we would have a burning mess on our hands. <laughs> so it's really good if I can pull the genius out of them and their own individuality. I love that. Pull the genius out of them. That sounds, right. sounds probably easier than it is to do. <laughs> but how do you do that? I know that's a big question, but how, how do you pull the genius out of somebody? Yes. Well, I think the first thing that you have to do is you have to create a culture where people trust you and where they're comfortable and they're comfortable being honest. Right. And so I talk a lot with my team about vulnerability and really getting to the root of why we do what we do. And so for me, your question was, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. It really comes down to being patient enough to ask a lot of questions. So if somebody, whatever it is you decided to do today, you know, I would ask you, help me understand, why'd you choose to do it that way? Like, I know you had a reason in deciding to work your day that way. I'm interested to know, why did you choose to do it that way? Mm -hmm. And so the difference there is when you, when you get somebody tapping into the reasons why they do what they do and how they think through it, um, I think they arrive at a point where they're really proud of the way that they do things and it's their own individual stamp and, and it and it's not me or their leader telling them hey here's this cookie cutter go be this person um, because i think people can do that for a little bit but in the end it's not all that motivating or exciting and and people tap out so that's how i go about attempting to pull out the genius out of the individuals i talk to yeah i can think about leaders that i've worked for that have used both approaches Right. They've used yeah. the approach where they tell you kind of what to do, how to do it, how to think, what should be the reasons why you do things. And I've had leaders do what you do and pull that. I don't know if it was my genius, but it was some some of my motivation out of me. Right. And I can definitely feel the difference. And so that that feeling that you have is really inspirational versus yeah. uh, stifling. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know what? I have a story I want to share with you about that, because you talked about feeling. Mm -hmm. 
And I think it is so important that we slow down and think about how we make people feel when we interact with them, because that's really what they walk away with is their feeling. They either feel inspired, they feel motivated, or they feel behind and deflated, right? And the truth is we always have more we can stretch into. So there's always the possibility of walking away feeling like you could be more. But I think about the people that have made me feel inspired, like you referenced. And um, years ago, I was promoted into this job. You know, I went for the promotion. I got it. I was so excited I got it. Um, And the individual's spot that I was taking, he had just been promoted out to another job. And um, he is, he's like my ultimate mentor in life. I love him. I've worked for him for a long time. I look up to him and, and just truly adore him. And like two days into the job, I realized, oh my gosh, like I have his job. Like I have his job and sitting right here in this house, in this office, I picked up the phone and I called him and I said, oh my gosh, Chris, how am, how am I ever going to fill your shoes? I, I, I can't fill your shoes. I don't know how to fill your shoes. And he said, Sarah Francis, stop saying that. That is the last time I ever want you to say you're not going to fill my shoes. He said, because you know what? You're right. You are never going to fill my shoes because you can't. You're going to go walk in your own shoes and they're going to be better than mine. Yeah. I will never forget that moment for the rest of my life. And now when I put on my stilettos, whether they're four (laughs) inches high or three, I think I am walking in my own shoes, you know? And Mm -hmm. I think about those little deposits. Like that day, he could have chosen to say a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But man, am I so grateful. Because if he'd have told me how to fill his shoes, Lord, I'd have spent years trying, you know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'd have tried to do it his way. But he was smart enough to tell me, you go do you. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good example of somebody in my life who pulled that genius, you know, out of me. Yeah, that's a great story. And what a great reaction from him, too, because you're right. It could have been a really deflating moment where you would have questioned yourself the whole time. But instead, he gave you the space to create your own footsteps. With that opportunity, you now or at that point moving forward, you are in a situation where others might look to you the way you looked at him. That's a huge responsibility. Oh. Yeah. How do you how do you work through that responsibility? Yeah. Um, you know, I think you have to know the weight or try to understand the weight that you bring to any interaction. You know, and, and for me, and I learned this the hard way, I've done a lot of things the wrong way. And I'm sure I'll give a hundred more things to try the wrong way. Um but really understanding that it's okay to slow down and think through the weight that you might bring into a conversation. I'll give you another example. I had a young lady call me. She's a great leader in pharmaceuticals. I mean, you walk into a meeting, people know who she is. She, she knows her stuff and she's good at what she does. And she called me about, um, I don't know, nine months or a year ago. And she was at a tough point and she said, I can't do it. I, I can't do this. And she happened to report um, to, to a male, and she'd never worked directly for a female. And she was a young, single mom trying to balance being a mom and being a rock star at work. And she said, I just, I, I don't know. I can't find a way to balance this. And in that moment, I had to realize my weight in that conversation. That young lady was at a crossroads in her life, and she had to make a decision. She felt like I have to choose whether or not I can be a successful businesswoman or whether I can be a great mom. And so I walk very carefully in those conversations because Mm -hmm. just as I told you how much what Chris said meant to me, I hope that maybe the words that I say to others maybe mean that much to them. And so I try to slow down and really make sure that I ask questions about what they think and how they feel. And I try my best to give them advice that's going to put them on a trajectory. And I'm happy to say, you fast forward a whole year, that lady is still here, uh, taking names, doing great, and um, she's also an outstanding mother and role model for other women around her who are watching her, you know, show up at her kids' games and show up at gymnastics and also be at the top in terms of sales results. So mm. that's, a great, great. that's a great story. And, you know, in business today, we have more and more women in leadership positions. 
And yes. yeah, and <laughs> I actually can remember a time where I had a woman come to me, similar situation. She came to me and she said, I don't think I can do this. I'm struggling with that balance. And I don't know if I can continue in my role. And earlier you talked about raising your hand for the Girl Scout troop and right. being able to balance that. What kind of advice do you give to somebody like that? What, what did you say to this woman to help her realize she can move through both, handle both, balance both, and be a rock star at both as well? That's right. Well, well the first thing that I tried to tell her was that she had to get out of the box. And what I, what I mean by the box is there is no, I believe, there is no one right way to do this life, to do this job, to, to do anything. There's your way. There's your way and your approach, right? And so a lot of times, and what was happening in this young lady's case is she was running her business um, like the gentleman that, that she had worked for. And, and she can't, she can't do it the same way. And I did the same thing as a young leader. I, I was trying to do it somebody else's way. And so what I tried to do was free her up to think outside the box. What are different ways that you can reach out and influence that rep that lives six hours from your house, as opposed to maybe getting in the car and driving six hours and then spending the night two nights on the road and then six hours back home. Is there a more efficient way for you to delegate your time and really just freeing her up to be free to make those decisions. How do you want this to look? Um, which, uh, you know, I'll tell you, I arrived at that in a very hard way. Mm. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't just wake up and I'm like, Oh, there's freedom and you can work your schedule as efficient as you want. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, uh, at nine months pregnant with my second child, and um, very successful in what I was doing. I'd taken promotion after promotion, and and I loved my job, and I was great at my job. But at nine months pregnant, I walked into an office day with my boss, who I love dearly. He's the one I was referencing earlier. And I told him, um, I care the world about you, and I would never shortchange you. But this is where I step off the ladder. I can't do it. I cannot sacrifice being a great mother to be a great leader. And he looked at me like a ghost had just walked in the room. And he said, Sarah Francis, what are you talking about? You cannot, you cannot step off. What are you talking about? And then he looked at me and he said, you have got to stop trying to do this job like me. He said, you're not me. I'm not balancing everything that you're balancing. And I looked at him and I said, Chris, who, 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 who should I be doing this job? Like, I want to become you. I'm trying to become you, you know? <laughs> And, and he said, there, there are ladies who do it. And I said, who? I've never worked for her. Mm -hmm. You know, and he said, give me a day. Give me one day. I'm going to put you in contact with somebody. And I was lucky enough that a vice president in the industry was willing to slow down and take a telephone call from me. And at that moment, I had nothing to lose. I'd already decided this is where I step off. And so I asked the raw truth. I asked questions that I would have never had the guts to ask somebody. And she was telling me, um, you got to stop working the job that way. You can work it smarter. And she, and she said something about helping her kids with homework. And I said, I, I don't mean to be rude, but when you tell me you're helping your kids with homework, are you helping them or you mean you're paying a nanny to help them? And she started laughing and she said, no, Sarah Francis, I'm helping them. Mm. And she, her Okay, let me back up. His genius to slow down and say, let me connect you with somebody who can pour life into you, who's in your shoes, who can tell you how they've gone about doing it. And then her selflessness to stop and take time out of her busy schedule and to tell me it is possible. There is a better way. You've got to free yourself up. So, you know, it took reaching a point in, in almost, you know, stepping off and giving up what I love so much for me to come to a place where I realize, you know, I can work smarter. There is a different way to do it. We don't have to fit into anybody's box. And in fact, more times than not, I've found when you get out of the box, you soar. Mm. And so for me, I arrived at that vi advice for that young lady, uh, not because I read it in a book, but because I had, I had stumbled and fallen on my face and had to find a different way. Yeah. 
And and just for our listeners, because some people are not watching this, they're listening to it on the audio, I just want to remind our listeners that we're talking to Sarah Francis. She's a regional director with a pharmaceutical company. And we are talking a lot about really creating your own legacy, I think is what you're getting at, is how do you create a legacy? And you are talking about really looking at others and saying, I want to be that, but I have to figure out how to do it on my own. Amen. So I, I still wonder, you know, if somebody came to you and said, I want to do it my way, but I don't know what to do to figure out my way. Because I think that happens a lot, right? Like I don't, maybe they don't know what their way is, or they don't know what really they, how they want to tackle something. Is there any advice you can give to somebody to help them figure out what it is that makes them, them and their leadership style versus mimicking something that they've seen? Yes. I, I would say this, if it were you, Vicki, I would say, Vicki, what do you want to do? Like in your gut right now, if you own this business, if you took away any rules or anything that you knew that there was an expectation on you. And I said, you own Ignite. You are free to do anything you want to do with this platform a year from today. What do you want to look back and say you did? And amazingly, Vicki, when I ask people that question, if you could do anything you want to do, think as big as you want to think, what would you do? You would not believe the genius that comes out of their mouth. Some of the best ideas. We ask our representatives that all the time, and they come to the table with these grand ideas, and I think, man, that is better than anything I could have ever come up with, way better. And it's right here, and it's in their heart. And so I, I, what I would tell you is I would stop and I would ask myself that question. Hmm. What would I do if I owned it, if I didn't report to anybody, if I set myself free? What do I want to do? Hmm. How do I want to do it? And then have the courage to do it. That, to me, is the hardest part. Mm -hmm. It's not even sometimes dreaming of like, what do I want to do and how do I want to do it? But okay, well now, now you've been bold enough to say, I want to start a podcast. I've met a million awesome leaders and they have crazy stories and I want to share it. Oh, but then you had to do it. Mm -hmm. And so if I were coaching anybody out there who's listening, I would tell you to ask yourself that question today. If you could do anything you wanted to do in your business, regardless of what it is, what is that? How do you want to do it? And when you can fast forward in your mind to a year today, go ahead and put it on your calendar right now, a year from today. What is it that you want to look backwards and know, I got here. I got here and I did it my way. Um, and that, to me, is super rewarding. And when you do it, you're going to turn around and you're going to pass it on to the next person. And, 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 and that tops anything else, in my opinion, that you ever get to do. Yeah. So, well, I hope I answered your question. You did. And I'll tell you what, San Francis, I am feeling inspired. I have all kinds of thoughts Yay! going through my mind about what's <laughs> going to happen with this podcast. There you go. You're going to do yeah. cool things, sister. I can tell you. Yeah, it's really inspiring. And um, it's just a simple question, too. But I don't think it's one that's commonly asked. So it's a great one to yeah, unleash. Well, hmm. Because we're so busy looking at what other people do. Mm -hmm. We're so busy looking to see, like, well, what did somebody else do with a podcast? Yeah. Or what did another... What's somebody else done that's a great regional director? Yep. You know, I, the comparison game can be a downward spiral. Mm -hmm. and, and it really puts a cap on ourselves because in the moment that we try to go be somebody else or I want to do what they're doing, then you already know your cap. You already know your ceiling. You can only be as good as that person, that business, that podcast ever mm -hmm. was. Yeah, and but I think social... Yeah, I, th I think yeah. that social media has, has fed into that a little bit, too. Oh, it's so true. Yeah. It's so true. I, I want to talk about that a little bit. Okay. You mentioned social media. It's taken a little bit of a turn, but in a positive way. So years ago, you know, when Facebook and all this stuff first came out, if you were in the corporate world, you know, the advice was to stay away. Like, you should stay away from that. You know, that's a very vulnerable place to be. Um, but I'm actually trying personally to flip that on its head a little bit. You know, we, we, we talked about earlier um, my passion for having balance between work and life and my passionate for these young leaders that want it all. And, and there are a lot of people that would say you can't have it all. There's a lot of people that believe that. And so when I say that, I'm not saying it to offend anybody, but I actually do believe that we can succeed at both. And, and so I try to be very visible with my reality. 
whether it's good or bad. I try to be very visible, showing my kids, showing what Saturday looks like, showing a Girl Scout meeting, because I know there are eyes out there. They're, whether they're working within my organization, whether it's somebody working in a totally different industry that, that's a mom, and she's a woman, and she's trying to figure out, can I do it all? Can I sign up to be the Girl Scout leader or the coach and still be great in my career? And I, I think about people in my life that I've watched live out loud, and I watch them regularly on my Facebook feed, and it's such a good reminder to me. Like, it sets a bar, and I know that's a little bit of comparison, but it's almost like going, okay, some reinforcement. I can do this. Mm -hmm. We can do this. And yeah. so I think it's important for us to lean in and live out loud. And, you know, I came to that realization, and again, a not so pretty way. I wish that learning lessons in life were just, you know, they come to you easy. It's always pretty and fabulous. But for me, it's never seemed to actually work out that way. That's not the way I learned lessons. Um, but I was at a big national meeting and we were giving out awards. It's the biggest award night of the year. And this lady on my team um, got the biggest award you can get. And I was so proud of her. And we all went down to the bar afterwards and we were celebrating. And before I knew it, I looked over at her and her eyes looked like she had water in them. And I said, what in the world? What is going on? And she said, well, I got to figure out what I do now. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, I can't move up. I can't move into a management role. That's not possible because I want to be, I want to be a mom one day. And she goes, so I got to figure out where's my next step. And I looked at her and I said, what do you mean? You absolutely can do that. And she goes, who, who's doing that? And I, I went like this. Yeah. I'm doing that. What do you mean who's doing that? I'm, I'm standing right in front of you. And she said to me, which I'm convinced she only had the courage to say because she maybe had had, had a drink. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but she said, and I'm so appreciative of it now. She said, Sarah Francis, do you want to know what we think of you? And I was like, I don't know, do I? <laughs> scary. <laughs> she said, it was scary. Yeah. And she said, we think you're great at your job. We think you love what we do. We heard you had kids, but we've never seen pictures of them. So I don't think you're around. And in that moment, standing in that bar at probably 11 o'clock at night, I made up my mind to change. I made up my mind that I was carrying a torch for people coming behind me. And I owed it to them to be honest. I owed it to them for them not just to see me successful at work, but for mm -hmm. me to be purposeful in showing them the whole picture that 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 young lady who by the way sky is the limit has all the potential in the world and she's great at what she does the picture i had painted was false she was only seeing one chapter of my life she was only seeing successful career sarah francis and so i i i've tried really hard to make a commitment to live out loud and let people see that you can do it and i know i mentioned that she was a young woman but I'll tell you, I think it's an, an issue of something that everybody, women, men, everybody wants to have success in all parts of their life. I have a gentleman that I've worked with for the last four years. And let me tell you what, he's flat out taught me how to have better balance. He doesn't, if his kids have a swim meet, he's not going to miss it. And when I first started working with him, I thought, well, how are you going to do that? Well, not only does he do that. He is finished in the top four people at this organization, which, by the way, I know the viewers don't know. It's humongous, okay? It's huge. And um, in four years, he's never finished below number four. That is sick. That's crazy. That Most people would say that's impossible. And if they heard, okay, it's possible, they would say it's certainly not possible to also have a life. And he, he does both. Mm. And so I think it's important. Social media platforms are a great way for us to display and inspire other people to have the freedom to do it the way they want to do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it, it is a great platform. And I think that if we could use it more often in that way, wow, how powerful can that be? Yeah. For sure. That's right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I agree. We have talked about a lot today, and I love we, what we started out with about leading where you're at, and I love what you just talked about, about leading out loud. Those are two things that, you know, through your examples and your stories can be an inspiration to all of us. So I really appreciate your time today, Sarah Francis. Is there any last parting advice that you want to share with anybody that's listening um, on how they can live out loud and, and lead where they are today? Yes, 
I would tell all of you to be empowered by who you know you are inside. I think we are all equipped with our own certain set of, of skill sets and strengths. We all go through different adversities in life that make you uniquely you. And so if I could tell you anything, I would tell you, please see the value in who you are and that you are uniquely that person because you are the only person who can bring that specific thing into the world, into your workplace, into your home environment, into your community. You are the only person that's equipped to do that. And so step out there and, and live it. Step up and be who you know you are on the inside and it without fail great things will happen from it good advice thank you so much sarah francis for being here with us on ignite and we'll be right back after this break with some final thoughts enjoying ignite then you'll want to check out TechNado, another podcast from the IT Pro TV network. In each episode, hosts Peter and Don recap the week's top tech news and interview IT experts from around the globe. Learn more at itpro.tv slash podcasts. It was so great to talk to Sarah. Her energy is contagious, and she reminds us to lead where you are and with who you are. Sarah Francis gives us some great thoughts on how to do both. Thanks for being with us today. Please subscribe to our podcast and check us out on orendaleadership.com and at itpro.tv. From all of us here at Ignite, I'm Vicki Guy.